So, minimalism and Frank Stella. Now, I appreciate this man very much because minimalism is one of my favorite art forms. I am not a very good visual artist. You probably figured that out by now. But minimalism is very easy for me to do because it involves a lot of geometric shapes and flat coloring. So, I actually did try to do this with just traditional pencil paper, went out and bought a bunch of colored pencils. Um, it didn't quite work out because it turns out that not only do I not have a ruler, but uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, um, it doesn't like me drawing straight lines at peculiar angles such that my camera can be positioned properly. So instead I'm doing it in just Google Drawings here, nothing complicated like Photoshop or Illustrate because honestly I can't be bothered to learn how to use those. I learned a few semesters ago, I can't remember anymore. So I started here with just three red circles just to make them stand out from the white background. As you can see I'm making these empty squares here. I wasn't entirely certain what direction I wanted to take this thing when I started out, but I needed to make a lot of little adjustments like this. One thing that I noticed with a lot of his paintings was that um, there was really no in-between when it came to his work. There was either a very broad spectrum of colors, almost like a rainbow with many different shades and hues. Some things were paler, some things were darker. Or he would simply just use the standard black and white. Sometimes he would just use two bold standout colors, like uh, red and yellow together, but nothing else. As you watch me uh, painstakingly try to divide this <laughs> circle into four quadrants, uh, just a bit of my thought process here. I actually tried to, you're going to see this in a moment, I tried to emulate some of the characteristics of the color wheel when I was setting up what I want the colors to look like. Because, see, here you can see that I put red right across from green and blue across from orange. It's about as complicated as it gets. And then I just retained those same colors for the rest of the circles nested inside the larger ones. But I turned it just one rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. And I just did that four times so that one color would be in one, I suppose, quadrant at least one time. Lots of little adjustments. This part may have actually been uh, easier to do with traditional tools. But then, if I made a mistake, and knowing myself, I very likely would have, uh, there would be no way to fix that. Some more adjustments. Had to make a lot of those as we went along. I wanted to fit the last three parts of each circle within the cubes. Well, those are cubes, those are squares. Once again, all this talking that I'm doing is entirely unscripted. So if there are mistakes, and believe me, there will be more, I apologize for this. So for this one, I used the same colors, but I made everything a bit more drained, I suppose. I noticed that in some of his works, when he had multiple shapes spread out over a wide length, 
usually the most prominent features would be in the middle. And for this one, I just made everything darker. I realized that the dark orange looked a bit like brown, and I decided that I didn't really like that, so instead I chose something of a lovely golden yellow. Now, Frank did leave a fair amount of white space in a lot of his work, but to me it just felt a little odd, it stood out. I think it was the little, almost curved triangular protrusions where the circles kind of cut off from the cubes squares. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> but I decided to fill those in with a little bit, something that would differentiate from the ends of the circles, the colors there, and the square itself, the border of the square, like a picture frame almost. So I created these four rectangles, just filled them with bright colors with which to fill. And then, once those were finished, I just put everything up on top so they would fill in the background. Made a little adjustment there to fill in that extra white space. And that's about everything. So that is the finished piece that you're looking at now. It was inspired by a number of his more colorful pieces but none in particular. Something else that he often did was he used line work to create these illusions almost. You've probably seen these things where it's a bunch of monochrome squares overlapping and it looks like it goes deeper and deeper, extends forever, like you could reach out and put your hand inside of it. If I hadn't done this, then I would have done one of those, but I figured that that would make for very repetitive footage and you may not like that. I do need to remember to make a citation this time. I think I overlooked that. I didn't do a tremendous amount of research. I literally just looked up famous minimalist artists old in Google, and I got Frank. So, thank you for being so easy to find, Frank. And apart from that, it was just reading one article about the history of minimalism which featured a few of his works, so I'll just cite that, and that will be everything. I'm much more pleased with this one than I was with the uh, Picasso emulation. I think that I'm always just better working with a computer than with the pencil. Something that I need to work on in the future. But that's all for this, and thank you for watching.